these three models here on loan from Airbus. They're handmade. They depict some of Bristol's successes from World War II. Down here we have the Bristol Blenheim. This is a Mark IV version. It was updated many times during the war. It's a family of aircraft. Many of the components from the Bristol Blenheim were used to make the Bristol Beaufort, which was a torpedo bomber used in many theatres in World War II. The Beaufort was very specialised, a little bit underpowered, but a very rugged aircraft. But it was realised something more versatile was needed. So again, they used many of the same components to make the Bristol Bow Fighter. All three of these aircraft, the Blenheim, Beaufort and Bow Fighter, all featured in the Malta theatre of World War II. Malta was a crucial island to hold in World War II as the fight in North Africa was crucial to World War II. Germany and Italy were trying to supply their forces in North Africa and Britain was trying to do the same. And from Malta, we could protect our supply lines. The Beaufort was used to harass and try and sink enemy ships in World War II in the Mediterranean. And it was often escorted by the Bristol Bowfighter, which would lead the attack, drop some bombs, and then go to attack other fighters that were to harass the slower Beaufort. There's a rather good book on the Bristol Beaufort called The Last Torpedo Bombers by Arthur Aldridge. In it, he account recounts one mission where he got too close to an enemy ship, a German ship at this time, and sliced off a large portion of his own wing. He thought his days were numbered, but he persevered and managed to get back to safety. When I was talking about the models earlier, I didn't mention much about the Bristol Bowfighter. Well, I'm saving it for this. This is the front section of our Bristol Bowfighter. It's a very special one. It's the only remaining one which had Rolls Royce Merlin engines. Most Bristol Bowfighters and Bristol aircraft were powered by Bristol engines. The Bristol Bowfighter was Bristol's real success in World War II. Nearly 6,000 were produced and they were used in many theatres around the world. The Bowfighter here was called the Ten Gun Terror of the Skies. That's because it's got four cannons mounted in the nose and they run the entire length of this fuselage. But also it would have six machine guns in each wing. Four on one side, two on another. Some of our exhibits here are mildly radioactive and the Bowfighter is one of them. It's because of the radium in the dials. This was used because it could glow at night so pilots could read the dials with minimal lighting. It was very dangerous to apply radium on these dials and in America many women lost their lives doing this vital war work. They would often lick the brushes with the radium on the brushes to make a finer point to make their work better. But in doing so they ingested it and it had very dire consequences. There is a fantastic book available called The Radium Girls. The Bowfighter here was chosen for one particularly special mission. Lieutenant Gatwood flew a Bristol Bowfighter over on Bastille Day to Paris. Paris was occupied by the Nazis at the time and they were planning to have a big parade on that day. They flew over in the Bowfighter, 30 feet above the Champs-Élysées, rose up and dropped a huge tricolour, the French flag, on the Arc de Triomphe. They then dived down back into the streets of Paris but having missed the parade, they searched on their road atlas to see where the German headquarters of the Navy were, the Kriegsmarine, and decided to make for that and strafe their headquarters and drop another trickler on the German Navy's headquarters just for fun. 